Okay, this is the big test. Let's power it on and see if it works. Well, that's promising. We have two LEDs, so we've got five volts and 3.3 .3 volts. Hey, 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 blinking LED, perfect. So we have a blue, a red, and a green, and the green one is blinking. That's hooked up to a GPIO pin, fantastic. So I finally got round to assembling my super simple ESP32 S3 dev boards. So the PCBs came from PCBWay a couple of weeks back and they came out really well. So it is a really, really super simple dev board. You could make one yourself quite easily. We've based it on the ESP32 S3 room module. And the nice thing about this is you can connect it directly to USB. So you don't need a USB to UART chip, it just plugs straight in. Um, our board's very, very simple. We have a voltage regulator. So we take the five volts from the USB and turn it into 3.3 volts. We've got the decoupling capacitors on the input and on the output. There's the reset button. And then we've got the, um, some LEDs just to indicate what's going on. So a five volt, 3.3 volt, and one hooked up to a GPIO pin. And then we've broken out all of the pins onto a header. So it is a very basic dev board. Let's get on with assembling it. So the easiest way to get these boards assembled is to use the provided stencil from PCBWay. So I've already done that here. I take the stencil down, put the solder post on, and then use my spudger to squeeze the solder post onto the actual pads. Now it didn't come out perfectly. I wasn't quite sort of flat, but we just need to place the components now, and then we'll put it on the, um, on the hot plate and melt all the solder. So we're just placing all the components. Here's the buttons. There's a bunch of um, resistors some resistors for the diodes so I stick those on here's the actual diodes so I, I think these are red green and blue may have got those mixed up though bunch of decoupling capacitors to stick on and then, then we're pretty much done stick it on the hot plate and heat it up everything jumps nicely into place now the only bit that didn't quite work due to a slightly messy solder post job is the actual usb socket so we had a few solder bridges so just run the soldering iron over these just to make sure that they are connected and there's no solder bridges. Then it's the solid test. So solid, 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 and solid. Okay, so that was using a stencil. Let's do it manually. So I've got everything taped up here. We'll do the more difficult components first. So let's start off with the USB socket. I'll switch over to the microscope for this. Okay, so we're under the microscope. Um, everything's lined up nicely. We'll add some flux. Now, some of these pins will be tricky because there's quite a big ground plane. So we may need to kind of add quite a lot of heat. So what I might do is start with some of the pins in the middle and work my way out. That way the board would have got warmed up. So when we hit the end pins, they'll be nice and hot. So let's make a start on that. So I've got my soldering iron here. Hopefully you can see all this as well as I can. One pin. Two. That looks uh, clean enough so we can actually see what we're doing. Let's check, these are all solid. So, there we go, let's stick this in. So, it's solid, solid, solid. Oh, not solid. In fact, lots of these aren't solid. Okay, solid test mark two. Solid, solid, solid. Solid, 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 and solid. Not bad. Done. Couple of tries, but we did it in the end. Let's give it another clean up. And I think that's good. Quick double check, make sure we've not loosened them by uh, our rigorous cleaning. So still solid, still solid, still solid. Yeah, nice and solid. Everything's nice and solid. So what I might do before we move on to anything else is flip the board over. And make sure our socket is really nice and secure. So 
So there we go, nicely secured. Let's move on to the next part of the board, which will be the soldering of the ESP32 module. So we'll do that next. Now there's got a misconception that you need to solder these, um, these pads here, the thermal relief pads. It's not really necessary unless you want really good thermal performance. So check out the data sheet for confirmation of that. But we'll just solder it on the actual pads around the edges. So that's next, solder up the ESP32 module. And the trick with soldering these up is to get the alignment right. So let's uh, align these and the bottom ones. And what I'll do is I'll tape this down and then we'll just sort of one pin whilst we're pushing down on the module. And hopefully we'll get it all soldered up nicely. So let's just get this alignment nice. Okay, so I've got the uh, PCB plugged into a bit of breadboard just to hold it still. Let's try plugging it in and see if it works. So let's get the USB connector in. Well, so far that's promising. We have um, two LEDs lit. Got a blue one and a red one. Hard to see in the video because the, uh, the camera kind of gets a bit washed out. Let's see if I can improve the display. Yeah, well, you can kind of see there's a blue and a red LED. So let's see if we actually enumerate. So we do this on a Mac or a Unix computer, just um, see if we have a USB device showing up. Well, that's pretty promising. So this is our device. Well, I've got a simple blink sketch here. Let's see if we can actually program our board and see if it starts blinking. Oh, even more promising. It's writing the program, so we're drawing our code in Flash. And there we go, a blinking light. So I think our, our next video in this kind of series, let's, um, let's take our dev board and uh, professionalize it. We'll need to work out what a professional dev board actually means, but this is a very, very basic dev board, so there's a lot you can do to improve this if you were going to go to production. So let's do that in the next video.